would or wouldn't do, but I know that there is a level of confidence that comes with maturity. Jamie, I completely agree. I think it comes also with, like you said, this time in our in our culture, I mean, this time in our history, that, you know, we have a predator in, in chief, I mean, a president, whatever. He's a, he's a predator, too. He's a sexual predator, too. And he still got elected. So I think that it's a time in our in, in history now where, I mean, even with the Women's March, with, as far as protesting the, the, you know, the Muslim ban and protesting um, the inauguration of this fool, all those things help to elevate women at this time in our history. So either you're on the right side of treating women as equal or you're on the wrong side. So I think that, I mean, it's easy for people who have not been, you know, have, haven't experienced any type of uh, sexual harassment or, or sexual assault. I mean, it's, it's much easier for you to say, I don't understand why it's just because it didn't happen to me. Because I think people have to be comfortable. You have to be comfortable. And first of all, you have to think about how much power these men have. Who's going to believe you over somebody who's even in their career, who's powerful, who has money, and you're just a number? Most of these women usually think I'm the only one. Oh, he did this to me. And so I, and a lot of times they think it's my fault. It's my fault. So I can't say anything. Or I shouldn't have wore this. Or I shouldn't have went to his you know, had a drink with them. Even though, you know, we're supposed to be colleagues, I shouldn't want to have a drink with them. It's all this on the woman, women instead of the men. So as far as the timing, though, you have to be comfortable to be able to do that. And this time in our, in our history, this time right now, is the time for you to come out. If any other time, you should come out. The point is, it has to stop. And if we don't start having conversations with our husbands, with our brothers, with our sons, with our nephews on how to treat us, it's going to continue. Yeah, I agree. I do think that it is a, it's not really a generational thing. I just think it's a gender thing that since the beginning of time, women have always been seen as inferior to men. And with all the laws that were women couldn't vote and women couldn't do this and that. I agree with that. I just for me, I've never been in a situation where I was sexually harassed that I can think of at this point. So. As much as I would like to say I wouldn't go for it, I would say something right away. I can't really judge those women on not saying anything. It's just I hate that all of these men have accomplished these great things. And now when they're basically ready to retire, all this stuff comes out. And it's not going to take away from what they did. Now, now, now I'm, I'm wondering here as a, as a man, I'm the only man representing somebody will call in a minute. I'm like, hey, here's a number, fellas. Um, but well, there's a fine line, you know, of us crossing the line, you know what I mean? And sometimes we're overly flirtatious, or, you know, in the workplace, somebody may say something that is wrong, you know what I mean? It, the lines are, are, are so finite. Well, they're not finite. They're so great in in that, you know, you can say something like I, I've seen stuff where somebody may be super southern and they always call you honey or something like that. Hey, honey. You know, and this is on the female mm-hmm. side or but in an HR perspective, you know, like you that, and uh-huh, say that again. Like you and Angie. I don't call her. honey. I'm, I'm talking about at work. <laughs> like a country lady to call everybody, honey. Hey, honey, can you come here for a moment? You know what I mean? <laughs> Y'all got jokes over there, right? But you know what I mean. Just the <laughs> just the use of those words, or if somebody is at work and I don't know there. Now, me, I am not what you call. I'm not guilty of this, but I'm just saying some some guys may be at work and see a female coworker and tell her she looks nice today or something. I don't. It, it depends on what you're saying. And how you saying it, you know what I mean? And how you're looking at it, how you made her yeah. feel. You know what I mean? There's so many elements to it. But but context is everything, right? So from an HR perspective, there there are a couple very clear notes. If she works for you or is subordinate to you, then you're not complimenting anything. Do you tell Bud that his tie looks great? Or his pants are fitting awesome. So it's it's really, and, I, and this is hard because common sense ain't so common. But if you wouldn't be comfortable saying a certain thing in front of the president of your company or in front of your mama, then you probably shouldn't be saying it to whomever, right? So you Absolutely. always want to err 
on the side of being very conservative. And there is a way to uh, to assess whether the interest is mutual. You know, like the, the clip they've been pay- playing of Matt Lauer where he told um, Meredith Vera, oh, the view was really nice when she happened to be bending down, picking up scripts. Now, he know he was dead ass wrong. It just happened that they had cut to a commercial, but the audio was still rolling. So I never want to be the person of don't say anything to anybody, but I, I want you to have common sense and, and be very aware of what can cost you your job and your, and your income. Now, the, the, the funny thing is you hear, aren't there industries where people say, well, you got to kind of be that way, you know, well, the industry is like that. You're going to have to be like maybe it's a construction industry or something where the men is always flirtatious or you might, you got to expect it. You know what I mean? It's like y'all have put in a position where, hey, if you want to come up or if you want to uh, 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 make it in this industry, then you need to, you know, just bend your standards a little bit or, 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 or deal with a little bit more. You know what I mean? I, I seem like I've heard that. Well, I, I, that I, that's not okay, though. Absolutely. I feel like the only industry where that's appropriate is that if you work at a strip club. Right. <laughs> right. And, and you have decisions to make. Like, I started my career in the financial services industry at an investment bank. They don't give a hell about nothing I'm talking about HR because money rules that environment, right? So I'm having to from an HR perspective, talk to a managing director that's making $6 million a year and talk to him about why he can't cuss out an intern on the trading floor, why you can't life. bang the phone and, and break the phone, you know, by her head. Like, you can't do that. So he don't care about rules and regulations, but what he does care about is impacting the company he works for with lawsuits. Right. So that wasn't my ideal environment, but I had to figure out what is his motivation. He don't want this investment bank, you know, in the papers for mistreating interns. So I got to talk to him about the money he's going to cost the firm. And so at any given time, you have to make decisions whether or not this is violating your your non-negotiables. Right. I think we have Raider for life. I don't think that a lot of companies really care about sexual harassment like that because with Bill O'Reilly, he got rehired and he paid someone $20 million for sexual harassment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. I, I think there's a different, if there's different bandwidths for it. Like, when you think about this Matt Lauer thing, they didn't fire him so quickly out the kindness of their heart. They fired him as soon as there were receipts that could tell, that could show that they knew what happened. So that they, when she sues them, and she does, she can't sue the law, the company, NBC, and Matt Lauer because they fired him immediately. Right. So, I mean, I think with, uh, what Angela said earlier, now is the time that the culture is shifting and they're taking this more seriously than they ever have in history. Right. Pause on say, Hey, if somebody is like watching, this is a, a cooking a soup in the, in the kitchen or something. Can you pause while you're not talking? <laughs> I think that's my wife in the kitchen. Yeah, can you mute him? Somebody needs to mute. It is not me, and I'm not in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I was not muted. I was on mute. <laughs> Very sexy, okay? I don't want sex. I thought you were in the kitchen. Not- <laughs> anyway, we will keep going. Hey, Raider for Life's on the line. Welcome, brother. How you doing? I'm fine. How are you doing? All right, good. That's who was in that cooking that soup. That's who was in that cooking and banging them dishes around. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was me. I was That's going to get What's up, brother? You got a point. You uh, you want to weigh in on something? Mm-hmm. I, I just think uh, the, the biggest thing that I take from the early parts of the conversation is that we as men uh, make a lot of assumptions because we're guys as far as how to address stuff. And you'll hear things that women go through and the temptation is to say, well, I would have done it this way. I would have said this. Why didn't they address this or that? And because we're men and we're not in their shoes, we don't see, you know, perhaps the barriers or or the intimidation uh, that happens to them, uh, whether it's from men, it could be from other women in positions of power. The things that happen that we don't see, 
And so we just assume all uh, that make it in the bill because we would have dealt with a certain way. But women have a whole different uh, dynamic when it comes to dealing with people in positions of power. So, you know, I had an epiphany on my job uh, with the position I'm in and my work. I'm a union rep. And I was talking to one of my uh, uh, female co-workers, and she was sharing something with me, and I realized that it was, I saw it from her perspective and I realized, you know, the fear and intimidation is real. And sometimes it is simply because someone is a woman that they are dressed differently. So when women say, when we question why did somebody wait so long to address this or that, um, they address it when they feel the power, when they feel confident. Or, you know, you have this word to share moment now where, you know, somebody started the ball rolling and other people were gaining confidence to go ahead and share their stories now. So, it's, uh, you know, we shouldn't go questioning why are they speaking now. Uh, you know, if you've dealt with someone that's been in an abusive situation, been molested, uh, you know, been uh, harassed on the job, you know, the fear is a very real thing. And so, you know, we should applaud anybody that's coming forward to address these things. Mm-hmm. Well said. Well said. Yeah. That, that, that. It's 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 interesting because you got some guys who, when it comes down to, like I'm looking at Russell Simmons' situation for today from today, and if people haven't heard, Russell Simmons actually stepped down. Allegation came out, and Russell Simmons has uh, stepped down from his from uh, being the uh, leader of his companies. So he said he's just gonna you know go go into the background and you know hire somebody else to lead his companies, uh, and he made a statement. I mean, I mean, it's been going on for a couple of weeks, but he's been, you know, made statements like especially with Terry Crews saying, hey, man, um, you should leave that alone, that situation alone. And then there was some stuff going on where he was um, connected somewhere loosely with the uh, Harvey Weinstein situation. I can't remember the, the in-between person, but basically same thing where he is accused of, you know, some uh Sexual harassment, sexual uh, misconduct, hell, rape, and everything else that you know he had did at a younger age. Him and um, I cannot remember the guy that he did it with, but that was I heard that a couple uh, weeks Brett, ago. Brett, Brett Ratner. Yep, that's it, Brett Ratner. So I heard that one last week, but today um, with the situation, he ended up stepping down and just saying um, my story, my recollection, recollection, rec. Collection of the situation is different from the young ladies, but you know I I'm going to step down from my companies and I I feel like I'm going to um, basically grow myself spiritually and this and this and I and I'm, I'll, I'll put my uh, companies in the hands of some new leadership etc. And that's pretty much what he did today. But these guys are able to step down and. You know, of course, the criminal element is gone because it's, you know, past the statute of limitations. But here you are, you you know, you're able to step down or, or, or leave your post of power, even, you know, even put some hush money out there to make a situation go away. So, you know, it's mm-hmm. that's what we do now. I think you're, that's my you're, problem. Like what? they're they're choosing to step down like Kevin Spacey. He was fired from House of Cards and thing with Matt Lauer. And like, there's no, I don't see any real repercussions for these, for these dudes happening. Like, I don't see their money being taken, except for Harvey Weinstein, his wife left him. That's fine. But they choose to step down from these companies. Like, that's what I mean when I say with these women waiting so long for this stuff to pass and all these years to go by, you're still letting them win by accomplishing everything because even though Russell Simmons has stepped down that doesn't change what he's done for music he's still going to be seen as a legend well and I think that's such an interesting perspective and I think it's it's an important one because the people who do things like this are not the boogeyman they're not all evil right they're you're all I, I think it's important for people to realize that you know, in a R. Kelly. R. Kelly can sing his ass off. Will I be buying any R. Kelly music? No. Because no. the, the more no. compass of him, 
I, I, I cannot make it work. And so I think it is important to realize, yeah, they did make positive contributions to, to their field of expertise, but they're still 